end-to-end -end machine learning project this is going to be a hands-on exercise so get ready with your Jupyter notebook and start coding step one we are going to import all the libraries for data analysis we have pandas for scientific computing we have numpy for data visualization we have matplotlib and cburn uh, ML library for classical ML algorithm, we will be using scikit-learn. For mathematical function, we will be using math. So here you can see I have imported all the libraries. Step two, read the data from the CSV. So give the path where your CSV is located and uh, show the top five rows of your data. So iris data dot head for five rows. It will show you the five first five rows. Get detailed information of data, checking if there is any inconsistency in the data. As we see, there are no null values in the data set, so the data can be processed. So you can do so by uh, using info function. You can see the total number of uh, columns, the number of entries over here. Number of columns in the data, you can see using shape function. You can see there are 150 rows and uh, 5 columns. If you want to see the unique values under a, a, a column, then you can do so using a unique function. So it, it will show you the unique values in the species uh, column, which is Iris tetosa, Versicolor, Versgenica, and etc. So there are three species basically. I, if I want to see the last five rows of the, of the data, then I can do so using tail function. If you want to count the number of records in each column, then you can use the count function here. If you want to see the, the columns where there are null values, and then you can use is null. So you can see there are no null values over here. For the statistical uh, information, you can uh, use describe. It will show you count, mean, standard, devi standard deviation, minimum, maximum, 25 percentile, um, 50 percentile, 75 percentile, etc. If you want to do a value count on each species of um, the iris, then you can do so using value count function. If you want to know the draw, uh, the null values, so uh, you can see in this, uh, you can do so in using end drop na. If you want to look the missing values in each column, then uh, basically have created a, a function over here, which will uh, give using is null. I can uh, you know get the missing values in each uh, uh, column. So fortunately, there are no missing values. So this does the result. Sample length is zero. The number of missing values is zero for each column here. Then the type of iris data, if you want to know, then uh, type and iris data. Then it will show you panda dot core dot frame dot data frame. So it's of data frame type. Now, once we have uh, taken a look uh, into the data, then we would like to uh, you know do a complete data visualization. So you can do so by uh, you know using plot functions. So if you want to have a general idea about the data set, you can use plot and kind is equals to area and you will get this beautiful uh, plot. It will basically give you a statistics of the iris data set. So you can see the count, mean, standard deviation, uh, minimum 25%, 50%, 75% uh, and maximum. Uh, here the frequency of, of, of the uh, observation is plotted so for iris cetosa there are num the total number of species are 50 so you you can use count plot uh, to show the frequency of three species in the iris data set then you can if you want to see a pie chart uh, for each value count uh, of the species then you can use pi function where you can uh, give these values explode is equals to uh, for, for this uh, uh, part of the pie, uh, this like this, and uh, auto PC at PCD shadow is equal to the fixed size, it's equal to there's a figure size, etc. So you can see we can see that there are 50 samples each of all the iris species in the data set. Join plot is a Seaborn library specific 
and can be used to visualize and analyze the relationship between two variables and describe their individual distribution on the same plot so you can use join plot function and uh, give your columns as x and y i'm giving sepal length as x and y is equals to sepal width so you can see sepal length and sepal width and uh, these are the histograms so it's a scatter plot with the uh, marginal histograms then replace the scatter plot and histogram with care density estimate that you can do by giving the kind is equals to kde if you want to add regression then just give kind is equals to reg and you can get this uh, uh, joint plot for uh, supple length and uh, y is equals to supple width Replace the scatter plot with the joint histogram using hexagonal bands. So you can give the kind is equals to hex and you will get this plot. Draw a scatter plot, then add a joint density estimate. So you can join it using a plot join and uh, give uh, the KDE plot here. Facet grid is basically a multi plot grid for plotting conditional relationships. So you can give your data name here and then use is equals to species and height 7 and you can map it by you know sepal length and sepal width sepal length and sepal width and it will be a scatter plot here box plot gives a statistical summary of the features being plotted top line represents the maximum value top edge uh, of the bo box is a third quartile Middle edge represents the median, bottom edge represents the first quartile value, the bottom most line represents the minimum of the feature, the height of the box is called interquartile range, the black dots on the plot represent the outlier values in the data. So you can see I'm using a box plot function and giving uh, my x is equals to species and y is equals to pedal width and u is equals to species and my order is iris setosa versicolor and then virginica here draw a categorical scatter plot with non-overlapping points you can use swamp plot for this so you give the column names and uh, yeah you can see beautiful swamp plot here for uh, different species draw blocks plot by um, species so you can see for each uh, uh, species uh, by pedal by their features but like pedal length, pedal width, sepal length and uh, sepal width uh, drawn this uh, box plot strip plot draw a, is used to you know to draw a scatter plot where one variable is categorical so a strip plot can be drawn on its own uh, but it is al also a good complement uh, to a wall box or a volume plot in cases where you want to show all the observation along with the presentation of the underlying distribution so this is the strip plot function and you, here you can give these values x equals to species y equals to parallel width and uh, your data then color and uh, use by species here so you can see beautiful uh, strip plot here for your data Combine strip plot and box plot. So you can combine uh, box plot and strip plot. So uh, you know, give the use the box plot uh, function here and uh, give the uh, values here and then strip plot and then uh, you can you know this will be the combined uh, plot. Volume plot it is used to visualize the distribution of data and its probability distribution. This chart is a combination of a blocks plot and density plot that is rotated and placed on each side to show the distribution shape of the data. The thick black bar in the center represents the interquartile range. The thin black line extended from it represents the 95% confidence intervals and the white dot is the median box plots are limited in their display of the data as their visual simplicity tends to hide significant details about how values in the data are distributed then uh, plots are plot for uh, different columns in the data set so you can see i'm uh, plotting the volume plots for uh, different uh, columns like supple length sepal width pedal length pedal width and uh, um, the hue uh, given as species here so you can see here 
pair plot. A pair plot is uh, basically a very informative plot and uh, is also known as scatter plot in which one variable in the same data row is matched with another variable's value. Shows all how all the variables can be paired with all other variables. So use the pair plot function here. Heat map is uh, a very important uh, uh, plot basically and uh, it is used to find the correlation between different features in the data set. High positive or negative values show that the features have high co correlation. This helps us to you know select the parameters for machine learning. So we can use heat map here, give uh, the initialize the variables here. Distribution plot is suitable for comparing range and plotting for uh, groups of numerical data. Data is plotted as value points along an axis. You can choose to display only the value points to see the distribution of the values, a bounding box to see the range of the values or a combination of both as shown here. The distribution plot is not relevant for detailed analysis of the data as it deals with summary of the data distribution. So you can see I have uh, plotted this uh, distribution plot uh, in the form of histograms so it's this is by the features and this is by the species so you can see by is equals to species here so this is by the species lm plot plot data and regression model fits across a facet grid this function combines reg pl plot and facet grid. Basically, it is intended as convenient interface to fit regression model across conditional subsets of a data set. So you can use lm plot function here. So you can give uh, the columns here, then the data u equals species, markers equals to o, palette equals to winter. Uh, then facet grid. Uh, facet grid is basically you know uh, used for uh, this uh, plotting the data and, uh, and you can map it with the KDA plot here so sepal length by sepal length so you can you can see and this hue is given as species then there's this beautiful Andrews curve in data visualization an Andrew plot or Andrew curve is a way to visualize structure in high dimensional data it is basically a roll down non integer version of a Kent Kvyat radar M chart or a smoothened version of a parallel coordinate plot in pandas use andrews curves to plot and visualize data structure each multivariate observation is transformed into a curve and represents the coefficient of a fourier series this is useful this is useful for detecting outliers in time series data use color map to change the color of the curves so you have used color map is called to rainbow so you'll get beautiful um, andrew curves over here then parallel coordinates, this type of visualization is used for plotting multivariate numerical data. Parallel coordinates are ideal for comparing many variables together and seeing the relationship between them. For example, if you want to compare an array of products with the same attributes like comparing computer or car specs across different models. So you can import uh, parallel coordinates and uh, plot your data by species. So you can see here. RADBase is multivariate data visualization algorithm that plots each feature dimension uniformly around the circumference of a circle then plot, plots points on the interior of a circle such that the point normalizes its value on the axis and the center of each arc. Factor plot is informative when we have multiple groups to compare. Then box and plot, it's basically an enhanced box plot for larger data sets. Residual plot is basically the most useful way to plot the residuals to which though in, is with your predictive values on the x-axis and your residuals on the y-axis. The distance from the line at zero, this line, is how bad the prediction was for that value. So you can use resid plot and for different columns you can plot the this research plot then donut is uh, a donut chart is essentially a pie chart with an area of the cut center cutout so 
you basically give the feature names feature sizes for each for each i mean the length of uh, each column and um, you plot a circle here and uh, based on based on uh, whatever numbers of uh, data you have in the in different columns uh, these will be the uh, result so you can see we have equal number of uh, uh, sepal length sepal width petal length petal width uh, so it's uniform right now Create a KDE plot of sepal length versus sepal width for Setosa species of flower. KDE plot is used to fit and plot a univariate or bivariate kernel density estimate. So you can use Seaborn's uh, KDE plot over here and uh, give the, the KDE plot of uh, sepal length and sepal width. So you can, you're doing it for uh, uh, to these two columns for the species Iris Setosa. Venn diagram, a diagram, a Venn diagram is basically a diagram that shows all possible logical connect relations between a finite collection of different sets. Each set is represented by a circle. The circle size represents the importance of the group. The groups are usually overlapping. This overlapping point is uh, basically represents the intersection between the groups. So I'm doing it for sepal length and uh, sepal width here so you can see 135 records 135 and then 15s are the, these are overlapping between the, both the groups so you can import uh, when from matplotlib and uh, you can plot in this way now coming to the machine learning part of uh, the project the machine process of machine learning begins with the observation of data such as example direct experience or instruction in order to look for patterns in data and make better decisions in future based on the example that we provide the primary aim is to allow the computers to learn automatically without human intervention or assistance and adjust actions accordingly for that we will split our data set into three parts train test validation sets we are going to use scikit-learn library which has all the required functions and machine learning algorithm required for this notebook we before we split our data set look at the output we want to predict we want to predict the given sepal and petal dimension follows to which type of species we have three type of species iris setosa iris versicolor iris virginica we will convert those species names to a categorical value using label encoding so here we have the data as we give the um, the, the features that we have here to x and the, what we want to predict as y then we actually convert uh, species name into categorical values using uh, label encoding here so you can see um, all of these species, um, Iris setosa, Iris versicolor, and Iris virginica, they have been converted in form of uh, numerical values like 0, 1, 2, etc. Then we split the data into train and test set. Um, I'm doing it for in the form of 70s to 30 ratio here. So X train, X test, Y train, Y test is equals to train press split. X, Y test size is equals to 0.3 and random state is equals to 101. Since this is a classification problem, then we'll be using algorithms which suits to this classification problem, which are basically logistic regression, SVM, Nibase, decision tree, etc. So let's see logistic regression. Logistic regression is a statistical method for analyzing a data set in which there are one or more independent variables that determine an outcome. So the outcome is in the either form of true or false. The outcome is measured with dictomus variable in which there are only two possible outcomes so we have this uh, we create a model here and we fit our data x train y train and uh, then we do the prediction using the predict function over x test and uh, then we print the accuracy and you can see that we have accuracy of 0 0.0 uh, 0.95 uh, so which is quite good basically um, then after that we go for SVM 
SVM is basically a support vector machine. It's a, it's a supervised machine learning algorithm which can be used for both classification or regression challenges. However, it is mostly used for classification problems. In this algorithm, we plot each data item as a point in n-dimensional space. n is the number of features that you have with the value of each feature being the value of a particular coordinate. Then we perform classification by finding the hyperplane that differentiate the two classes very well. Support vector machine is a frontier which best segregates the two classes, I mean the hyperplanes. So we create the model first and then uh, we fit uh, our data, x train, y train and we do the prediction over the, our x test and we calculate the accuracy. So it, this is better than logistic uh, regression over here. So this is the accuracy. Then coming to naive base, it is a classification technique based on bias theorem um, with an assumption of independence among predicts. In simple terms, a naive base classifier assumes that the presence of a particular feature in a class is unrelated to presence of any other feature. For example, a fruit may be considered to be an apple if it is red, round, and about three centimeters in three inches in diameter. Even if these features depend on each other upon or upon the existence of the other feature, all these all of these properties independently contribute to the probability that this fruit is an apple and that is why it is known as naive. So we build the model using this Gaussian NB and then we fit our data here. So X train, Y train and uh, we predict on X test and uh, we calculate our accuracy on uh, Y test. So it, this is this gives us the same accuracy as logistic mo regression model. Then comes the decision tree. Decision tree are very efficient. These are a type of uh, supervised learning algorithm having a predefined target variable that is mostly used in classification problems. It works both for categorical and continuous inputs and output variables. In this technique, we split the population or sample into two or more homogeneous sets or subpopulation based on most significant splitter differentiator in input variables. So we create a model using the decision tree class classifier and we give the maximum leaf nodes is equals to four. You can change this value to five or, or three or two and see how what will be the accuracy. Then you fit uh, the model with X train and Y train and then do the prediction over the X test and uh, calculate the accuracy uh, of our model on y, our test data, Y test. And you will get the accuracy as 0.97. Then comes random forest. Random forest is a versatile machine learning method capable of performing both regression and classification tasks. It also undertakes dimensional reduction methods, treats missing values, outlier values, and other steps of data exploration and does a fairly good job. It is a type of ensemble learning method where a group of weak models combine to form a powerful model. So you give the maximum depth it's equals to three. You can change this maximum depth to uh, two or three and just check what would be your accuracy. And so you fit the data over here. So X train, Y train, fit it and then predict over x test and calculate the accuracy over the uh, y test which is the test data extra tree classifier is an ensemble learning method fundamentally on based on decision trees basically it's like a random forest randomizes certain decision and subsets of data to minimize over learning from the data and overfitting ensembles give can give you a good boost in accuracy on your data set so you create a classifier here and you fit the model with x train y train data you predict the results on x test and calculate the accuracy on uh, y test data so it gives you accuracy of 0.195 knn is a simple algorithm that stores all available cases and classifies new cases based on similarity measure like distance function 
Canon has been used in statistical estimation and pattern recognition already in the beginning of 1970s as a non-parametric technique. So you give n is so you create a classifier and then I give and the number of neighbors n is equals to three. You can change this value. Just you know try changing it and see the accuracy how it changes. Then you fit the model by x train and y train. You predict uh, on x test and uh, calculate the accuracy over the y test. Now xg boost is optimized distributed gradient boosting library de designed to be highly efficient, flexible and portable. It implements machine learning algorithm under the gradient boosting framework. SG boost provides a parallel through boosting GB, DT and GBM that uh, solve many data science problems in a fast and accurate way. So you can see I am using uh, giving this uh, XGB classifier then filling the data and then predicting and then calculating the accuracy. So it gives the accuracy of 0.97 in the same way we um, you know calculate the accuracy using cat boost so this gives us the accuracy of point nine seven so uh, that's it from my side uh, this is basically a complete machine learning project and uh, um, you can use various algorithms uh, for different kind of problem uh, thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned. Thank you. Bye.